So, um, four medieval ram vessels um, have been discovered through excavations on four medieval manorial sites, uh, uh, manorial and castle sites in South East Wales. And uh, these four vessels are distinct in that they're the only known four rams, ram vessels to have come from South Wales and also from South West England. And so this paper is going to focus on each of the four rams and I'm going to be presenting initial interpretation on these objects and you can tell me if I've made wild leaps and assumptions um, on these uh, four rather interesting objects. So here's ram number one. <laughs> so ram number one was excavated at uh, Romney Castle in the 1980s, the late 1980s, by the Glamorgan Gwent Archaeological Trust. The ram was discovered underneath the collapsed roof of what was considered to be the main manorial hall in a large fire event, um, which saw the abandonment of this particular building. The vessel was discovered smashed um, on the floor in association with a um, group of I think about 68 silver coins and the, and the an analysis of those coins uh, suggested that the fire had happened in the very late uh, 13th century and we've been quite happy or it's <coughs> these rams are very likely to be 13th century in date but this this site actually actually gives really nice stratigraphical evidence for this. Um, the ram is quite badly fire damaged and it was actually caught in two fires. So the initial fire was in the 13th century and then the second fire was in the 1980s where there was actually quite a substantial fire <laughs> at um, the unit's uh, offices. So it looks really toasted now, <laughs> so um, it's, it's quite a sad thing really. Okay, so um, the horns on this ram are sort of quite sort of sweeping really. You can see that the eye is a ring and dot. There's a little spout there on the end uh, and um, there, there are two holes for the snout as well. And the, the, the big thing really with these ram vessels is that they are all jug shaped. So they're not <coughs> zoomorphic. So actually calling them acrimonials is, could be contested actually. Um, at the moment that's not necessarily the most important thing. The fact that, that these decorative elements are very particular to this jug is, is what is worth keeping in mind. The second ram jug, so I'm introducing them to you in, in order of discovery as well. So the second ram jug was found um, at Cardiff Castle in uh, 2005 and this ram was found in um, a sealed medieval deposit, I think it was a dumping deposit and the other material was medieval, so chatting to the guy who's looking at this material at the moment, he, he's very happy that this does come from um, a sealed medieval context. So this ram um, is slightly different. The horn is vaguely similar to the Rumney ram, um, but here we have um, pellet decoration for eyes, so iron enriched pellet decoration. We still have um, the spout that we saw in the previous one, and we have really nice little, little holes here for snouts. And then also, we've got this impressed decoration on the top, which I think is wool. I'm kind of thinking that that's sort of meant to be sort of quite textural. And again, it's a jug form. We have iron rich pellet decoration on here, which is important. But actually, we have quite a simple handle and an open head because aquamineal jugs uh, or aquamineals usually have quite uh, have a closed head and then within the body you would pour the water so they're aquamineals if you wash it hand washing you'd pour the water in through the body and then it would come out through the spout our third one <coughs> this is the cosmiston ram um this was found in 2010 and this one is actually again different from the other two so the horns are nicely tightly curled and you've got impressed decoration on the horn too so giving it a little bit more texture than the others you have ring and dot for the eye decoration similar to um, the Romney ram we don't really have little snout holes I don't think but this one is spouted again we've got the decoration on the top of the rim too and this is also another jug form and it also has pellet decorations which can be parallel to the Cardiff Castle Ram. 
This one, this uh, ram was found in a, a big demolition deposit, which looks like it was the actual pulling down of the main manorial site at Cosmiston. Okay, this is the fourth one. So this was actually excavated in the late 1970s, but in revisiting the archives a couple of years ago, um, I saw this and it was down as a post-medieval chafing dish handle. And the fabric doesn't look post-medieval and it looks a bit like a horn. I think Duncan looks at as looking as if it's not. But um, I think it's a really tight <coughs> horn here. It's not a great um, photo either. I've sort of proposed that we have a fourth um, ram and this time from St Fagans. <coughs> St Fagans, again, is um, a medieval manorial site. So just to briefly go over this, each of these vessels, um, or each one, is made within a local fabric, a local fabric that, and made locally to South Glamorgan. The body takes the form of a jug and isn't zoomorphic. Each has ram head decorations and they are all found on manorial sites and we also have the one from Cardiff Castle, the difference is. <laughs> so, and these are actually quite important. They're each individual, they're each unique. So despite them being a ram vessel, actually they look completely different in some regards. So I just wanted to um, talk about any sort of parallels. There are parallel vessels um, that have been found from Kingston Ware kilns um, down in Surrey. And as you can see, they <coughs> also are jug forms and they've also got these applied um, head, uh, ram head decorations on the rim. And I just wanted to put this up because this is what people typically associate with medieval ram vessels, this Scarborough Ware vessel, which is, I think that's a re reconstruction, but it's these kind of rather wonderful vessels. And we do find um, other um, acronyms found also at the Kingston Ware kilns, but also kilns in Essex, in Shropshire, um, in Wiltshire, and then up in Yorkshire. The other point to make is, in the 13th century, highly decorated jugs were particularly fashionable, um, and these would have uh, embellished the dining tables of medieval manorial households, and also other households, lower status households. And so this is, this is part of a suite and part of a tradition going on at this particular time. In South Glamorgan, things are slightly different. And we, what we don't have um, is one single kiln. Over across the, across the, the Bristol Channel, the ham green kilns on the edge of Bristol are making the most beautiful vessel. This is a, um, a night jug that was found in the centre of Bristol. You can see there are these wonderful figures on the side. And we find ham green wares throughout South Wales. Ham green wares are imported to Ireland. We found them on um, shipwrecks, there's one just off the Isles of Scilly. And hand green wares were clearly high status products. So we only find them um, really on, in high status contexts on manorial sites and in ecclesiastical sites. What we're also getting are high status Stanton and Tonge wares as well. So when you compare the ram jug, which is locally made, they're slightly shonky in some terms, but they're not wheel thrown, they're handmade. Um, and if you compare them to these other vessels, it's, it's strange that we're finding these very distinct, four distinct vessels on these sites. So with, the, um, with local pottery or with the local tradition, we don't have a main kiln site. And it seems that pottery is made on different sites across the whole <coughs> region. So having one kiln producing the same things coming out, producing the same things doesn't seem to actually be a reality. So instead we have potters moving about the region, making things and learning how to make pottery in a similar tradition, with thumbed bases, with simple wavy decoration, simple applied decoration too. The idea of these, these rams then is, is how have they come about? How are they making these things? And normally they don't really make anything like this at all. 
Um, so I, I do think that these are unusual and uh, special objects. They're not being made like this. I think it's the most amazing photo. But I don't I don't have I don't think that they're all being stacked in a kiln together and that they've all come from the same firing essentially. So I've been thinking of ways um, that I can for, create sort of develop a more uh, considered interpretation to actually understand the meaning of these objects. They are vessels which uh, would have been directly part of the medieval dining experience. Acroneals are considered to be vessels specifically for hand washing. And whether these four rams are a simplified version um, of an acronym, I don't think we can really reconcile this. But what we can say is that they formed part of a medieval dining experience in the 13th century. So I've been looking at the image of the ram in medieval society and trying to understand why then we have these objects. And rams are part of the repertoire of animal Im imagery in medieval art. And the ram is included in the, in the medieval vestry. So this is a book which describes real and imagined animals. And this particular image and text comes from uh, the Aberdeen transcript. And uh, rams, as you can see, are associated with strength, virility, and maleness. <coughs> and then additionally, the story of um, Abraham and Isaac uh, was a really important Corpus Christi mystery play and it was one of the most popular plays and so if people don't know you have Abraham and Isaac, they go up the mountain, Abraham wants to uh, sacrifice Isaac to God and then God suddenly appears in a bush and goes no I don't think you should do that, here's a ram, they say okay I'll take the ram and sacrifice the ram. So ideas of patriarchy and um, paternity too, sort of really strong ideas that are coming through the image of the ram in medieval society. I'm just going to give you a very, very brief background to the area we're dealing with. So here's Glamorgan and Cardiff and the site, all the sites are kind of around this, this area here. And the Morgan was within an area of medieval Wales known as the Welsh Marches. And mer although marcher laws were answerable to the king, they were also a bit rogue. <laughs> so they um, actually held huge amounts of judicial and economic power within, within their regions. And um, the marcher area was the buffer between the medieval uh, Welsh lords and also England. And so the marcher lords were actually tasked really with, with keeping back the Welsh maintaining um, march lands within English control and then obviously maintaining those lands for the, um, for the king. And the laws of Glamorgan relied on their lesser laws to maintain and uphold this region. And the four manorial sites are important manors in that firstly we have, we have a ram from Cardiff Castle and that is the seat of the Lord of Glamorgan. Um, we have Rumney, and Rumney was actually held by the mother of the Lord of Glamorgan from 1269 to 1289, and I think that connection is, is also really significant. And then thirdly, Cosmiston. Cosmiston was one of the, the earliest manors created um, post-Norman conquest, and so it's an old manorial state and in the 13th century, it was still held by the family, who initially held that manor when it was first given um, post, post uh, conquest. And then St Fagans is also a very similar manor site. So if we put, it, put these objects into context and put them into a 13th century context where you have continual onslaught from Welsh attacks coming across, the importance of creating allegiances and loyalties is really central actually to the success of Glamorgan and the fact that the Lords of Glamorgan held, so de the declares a family had three successive um, uh, people actually holding that region, that's a really unusual thing for, for medieval society in fact, that you don't usually get a hundred years of rule by one person. So the importance of strong relationships to ma maintain the unity and support for the Lords of Glamorgan was essential to their success to this, in this area. So I've now <laughs> been thinking about the importance of fraternities and the, the creation of fraternities were a way in which these relationships would have enabled, secured and nurtured um, these, the loyalties of, of these Lords. And 
thinking about fraternities, you then continue to think about guilds. And if you think about guilds, you think about the Corpus Christi mystery plays. And then that brings you back to the ram. And dining rituals were at the heart of these guilds, these groups. And, and, these, and the dining rituals enabled the performance and display of these relationships. And we do know that guilds were incredibly important in the 13th century and they existed across Britain. We don't have actually a huge amount of information on guilds in this area. Historically, very little work has been done either on guilds or interrelationships between the, the lesser lords in this area. So I'm proposing that these four ra jug, uh, ram jugs, they're locally made, were very likely to have been produced individually at different points in time and are objects which represent these social relationships or fraternities. And the image of the ram is central to the enactment of fraternity and paternity. And these laws would have had connections to parts of England where um, where acrimonials were made and if they wanted something specific like a highly decorative ham green night jug and these more costly vessels to embellish their tables then surely they would have gone for those rather than a locally made slightly odd vessel so i think these these objects have actually been specifically made for these for these dining um activities So I'm going to sort of conclude it there. And I, but I am proposing that despite these four rams seeming slightly poorer in production quality in comparison with the French wares and the ham green wares, that actually they were imbued with greater meaning as they had been made specifically for the dining tables of those who were part, who were part of the Glamorgan community, which upheld and maintained the strength and power of the Lords of Glamorgan. And these vessels would have symbolised the alliance and loyalty to this community and would have been a celebration of the Morgan Courtly Society. That's kind of my idea. <laughs>